we might as well uh, get started uh, for, for uh, the, the, our, our final sessions. Um, so for final two sessions, the, the first one that we'll uh, kick off with now is, is looking at developing the effective infrastructure and, and supports. So I suppose uh, uh, the speakers are Paul Kavanagh, who is the Economic Officer uh, for Craig Avonborough Council up in Northern Ireland, uh, uh, Ashling Murta, who is a research fellow here uh, with us in terms of Whitaker Institute at NUI Galway, and uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, one, of the, one of, of two Fulbright uh, scholars at NUI Galway, uh, uh, Susie um, Monaghan, um, here she's uh, an, the audience manager for uh, audience health manager at Ithaca College, and uh, she specifically had put together her Fulbright uh, proposal was to come uh, because of the Creative Age project, so it's uh, great to have uh, Susie here for the last number of months as, as, a, as a Fulbright scholar. So without further ado, I'll ask uh, Paul uh, to sort of kick off uh, things looking at the whole uh, sort of Creative Hubs in terms of what has been done in terms of our, our project. Thanks very much, James, and it's good to be here. Um, I'm going to ad -lib, lib just a little bit because this is uh, not the iteration of presentation that I thought I had, and uh, there were one or two introductory slides. Um, just, just by way of introduction, I work um, in Craig Avon, but the partnership that the seed word that people talk about, it's in a way it's quite similar to WDC in that it stands for South Eastern Economic Development. Um, so it, it forms part of, uh, or the main parts of counties Armagh and counties Down in the north of Ireland. And um, I was just saying to Pat um, earlier this morning, it's coming up on four years since he and Ian Brannigan and myself had a chance meeting. Um, and, well, I suppose not a chance meeting because it's one of the things that happens um, through networking. Um, that uh, we were set up in the hope that a chance meeting would happen, and it did. And, and that's coming up nearly four years ago. Um, and we, we got talking about uh, what was happening in the, the, the creative sector in, in our various regions, and what more could we do to, uh, by way of stimulus, um, by, by way of helping uh, creatives, the creative talent, the, the creative businesses, and um, the, the, the one thing that I, I, I remember uh, saying, or at least uh, trying to articulate at that time, was I want to get involved in something that can make some sort of a tangible difference, if at all possible. Um, because in that part of um, the, the southeastern part of Northern Ireland, um, it is, uh, in very many ways, a, a peripheral region in Europe. Um, it's, it suffers from what I call um, uh, the big city syndrome, where everything seems to happen in Belfast or Derry. Um, and even though the small towns where I live and work are maybe only 50 miles away, it might as well be 500 or, or more. Um, so. Um, we are light on infrastructure, and at those times, going back four years to those initial conversations, I could see that we were some way behind what was happening um, here in the West, um, so we had something to aspire to. Um, so before I get into this, I was struck, as Pat was talking earlier, by one or two things um, that... Um, I'd uh, like to share with you. And um, one is that uh, when Pat was talking about this sense of place and the sense of how different the creative and cultural um, uh, businesses and, and people are in it, I was thinking uh, about myself. And for, for many years, I worked in uh, the private sector in the electronics manufacturing. And I could tell you everything under the sun about lean manufacturing, Six Sigma, uh, and I could go on and on for hours. And the th but the thing about those are that everything had to be repeatable a million times with absolutely no difference. And here, for some quirk of fate, um, I found myself in a time and a place where 
I'm actually trying to do the exact opposite <laughs> with the people and the businesses that I'm working with. Um, and, um, and maybe it's because I see the other side of that coin um, that I, I really am um, so rooted and interested in what it is we are um, all in our different ways trying to achieve in this sector. And the second thing is that um, although we're a number of partners working on the Creative Edge product from across um, the northern periphery of Europe, um, and we've all been focusing on our own individual parts of that, um, what actually has happened in practice is that there has been much more overlap um, in uh, what we've done and what we've developed than just four or five individual parts. And that's good because that's uh, what I believe that we were um, hoping to achieve eventually was that the, the different interactions that we were working on would come together to, to, to form a bigger impact. So in the, in the portion that uh, we've been working on in SEED um, to do with place and, and setting up infrastructure, um, that doesn't work if you don't have the people. It doesn't work if you don't have the support. Um, uh, it doesn't work if you don't have um, the, the, the data uh, behind it in spades that, that people like Pat and Aisling produce so that you can try and influence policy. Um, uh, and, and then I thought, um, yeah, influence, influencing policy is such a, an important aspect because uh, I think it's only human nature that we um, want to jump onto something that's working, uh, to jump on the bandwagon. And I think there's nothing truer than that saying in government circles because certainly in this sector, what we've seen is that without being too severe, um, uh, government, whether local or central, have been less supportive of this sector, but when, now that they have seen the, the things that are beginning to change and grow and happen and the impact that it, it can have on the wider economy, they're starting to be much more receptive, So, uh, and I think that's good. So um, that's by way of introduction because I haven't got my introductory slides. So what are we talking um, uh, about here? And so I make no excuse for overlapping a little on what Pat had said earlier in that um, the creative sector in terms of the project Creative Edge we've been working on is, um, just like Ian before me, please excuse me if I'm looking down rather than up because I'm straight into the bright lights. Um, it's very much about um, people and their products or services and, and the place where they are and how um, those three things interact together. Um, and, if I, and if I take those on to what we were aiming to do in our region, which would then feed into the wider project, um, we, we did run a series of um, workshops that attracted um, uh, between them over 200 people, um, really to try and uh, uh, start this impetus in our region for what could be done and what the opportunities were. And one of the things right at the start that we were so interested in was, was the export potential for some of those uh, people and some of those businesses. And it's fantastic today that we're fully participating in My Creative Edge, and, and that's the outworking um, of that. Um, and then getting on to the creative uh, places, creative spaces, creative hubs, and that's really what we were uh, striving to achieve as a, as, a, as a tangible benefit in our region. 25% vacancy rate. Um, when the, the downturn happened uh, between uh, 2007 and 2008, um, the vacancy rate in um, shops, offices, buildings, and so forth in the towns where I live and work was in the sort of, it, it varied a little bit from town to town, but it was in the sort of 8, 10, 12%, so it doubled. 
um, over that period. And it, it became such an obvious thing that, that um, uh, thriving towns, thriving communities looked as if they were uh, desolate and der derelict. So it, it seemed right in terms of general regeneration, a general thrust to try and do something about that, that if we could also uh, bolt that on and blend that into our work in the, the creative sector, that, that, that we would try that too. So how do we turn uh, this, bit of an exaggeration, um, into something that maybe looks a bit smarter in, um, in a street, in a town or a village? So um, one of the first things we did was we had um, another, we invited all sorts of people to a number of um, open uh, fora uh, meetings of all sorts, um, uh, property owners, uh, agents, um, anyone who had their hands on um, these empty and, and sometimes derelict spaces. Um, uh, people who may occupy those spaces, creatives, businesses, right across the whole sector from, from people writing software um, through to the, 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 the more tangible arts and crafts type people. Um, and uh, I remember at the very first meeting um, a, a encountering a, a, a startling I, I suppose, how would you describe it? Well, anyway, so, someone said something that really surprised me. Um, and I was sitting in the audience. I had a couple of other colleagues who were, um, were running this meeting. And I was sitting in the middle of the audience. And um, right at the front row, um, I recognized a couple of the uh, well-known property agents from this particular town. And there was... Um, uh, a, ch a chap beside them, and they obviously knew each other. And right at the end, when we came to um, question time, this person said, now, uh, let me see if I understand what's being said here today. So we're property owners, etc., and so you're actually saying to us, um, you want us to give you properties with a rent-free period of six to nine months so you can help some uh, creative business get into them and start up a, maybe start up a business and grow. And my colleague said, yeah, that's exactly right. He said, are you crazy or what? Are you crazy? I'd rather m uh, my property sat vacant. And you know, <laughs> there was a few nods and a, and a few all, uh, all, around, all around the place. So that showed you an extreme view um, a view that probably was um, built up during the boom times where uh, rents and rates uh, throughout this island just went through the roof and, and, and people like this person never had it so good as the phrase is. Um, but then, uh, not long after, through a chance meeting um, from, uh, uh, for a very different reason, um, I was, I was with um, a couple of people um, and they, they introduced me to, um, to another couple actually and they had, they were property owners and this, uh, my friend had said to them about a little bit about this project and they started to question me and they said, blah, 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 what, what about this? And we basically shook hands during that conversation about a property that they owned that they were going to give us for nine months exactly on the terms that we talked of earlier, rent-free, um, and uh, basically we had to uh, then um, detail um, a, a contract and, and so forth. So That's about the battle that I had. I told you my told you, told you <laughs> the presentation was out of sync. Um, I didn't realise what the battle was going to be like. So we ended up getting um, this place in a town called Lurgan in 
the north of Ireland, which um, is a, a, an old market town population of about 20,000. Um, and um, inside looks like this. And um, very quickly, we had two very different types of businesses take up residence here. Um, one uh, called himself a street artist. Um, in his youth, um, uh, what on earth do you call the things? I'm lost for the word now. Um, graffiti. A graffiti artist, you could call him. But has, has become um, uh, one of renown um, in uh, the last couple of years or so. And the other business, entirely different business, um, they um, uh, are a, a multimedia company who produce um, not only static photographs, but videos and um, short films and uh, everything else. And this comes back to one of the other things that we had thought might work in such a shared space. Um, would uh, people um, from, from different sides of the sector um, rubbing off against each other produce um, other things of greater benefit? So um, this was the very first one. Um, coming up on a year ago now. Um, but that battle that we were to have um, would take all sorts of twists and turns. Um, and this is another uh, remark that um, uh, happened at another more recent uh, open forum where we were trying to attract uh, people together for the, exactly the same reasons in another town. Um, and uh, quite early on, um, uh, youngish fellow, well, probably in his 30s, but <laughs> depends on where you start from, youngish fellow <laughs> said, that's a crazy idea. And then over a cup of tea at the end, the very same guy came to me and said, um, I've just opened a coffee shop restaurant, and it's in a three-story building, and there are two floors above me, totally empty. Do you think your hub space idea would work there? So in, <laughs> aren't people strange at times? How somebody can go from, in a half an hour from saying that's a crazy idea, for the seed to you know, uh, go into his mind to be saying, well, I've got two floors above me and I'm not doing anything with them. So um, uh, we can't be in two places at once and about six weeks ago, we opened up that space in Newry. Um, the official opening is actually today as we speak, two o'clock, in fact. Um, so uh, I've, a, a colleague is, is going to be there. Um, so that crazy idea is now working in Newry. And again, we've got a fascinating mix of, of people in there at the minute. Um, we've got a local craft collective of um, about 12 people who've been looking for a home for a long time. And they've taken space here, a whole floor in fact. And uh, about half of the, um, the first floor is shared by one company who's, um, um, I don't want to give their name, but they're, 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 they're working in the social media arena um, and um, uh, it's a business that is helping other businesses um, generate uh, income from social media. And they are, they're currently employing two people. And then another one is um, a script writer, screenwriter, that type of person. Fascinating mix. Um, and then two weeks ago, uh, we opened up this place in a town called Banbridge. Um, and surprisingly, um, at least I was surprised, this is located in what you could call a little mall, um, right on the main street. Um, and it's on the first floor. And there, it's, a, it's a wonderful space where there's um, about 50% of it is um, open plan out of the main corridor into the mall and the other 50% 50 has lent itself very nicely to, uh, to two more um, 
formal type places. And there's a whole mix, you, you see from here, there's a whole mix of, uh, of uh, uh, different types of, of little creative businesses there. Um, and uh, in Armagh, just last week, um, Armagh, uh, as well as being the ecclesial, ecclesiastical capital of Ireland, um, it has, uh, the, 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 the central part of Armagh is almost like a mini Dublin, and it has uh, wonderful Georgian and Edwardian uh, terraced houses. So we've been very fortunate to be able to get this space as well. Um, and um, and it, has, it literally has just opened. Again, with two businesses there. Um, one, uh, one business, um, the girl was um, running this from her garage at home. She's absolutely delighted to be in the town centre um, to try to expand her business because this is the reason she came to us, um, that things were beginning to uh, take off for her and she already couldn't fit um, into her, her garage. So this is a wonderful space. Um, so um, what, what have we got now? Um, after um, this time of, of hard work, knockbacks, all sorts of things. We've got four hubs now uh, operating in four different towns. Um, nine very, very different small businesses, some of them already growing. Um, 14 people employed. Um, about half of those were not employed or not self-employed before. Um, and. Again, in, in terms of this sort of general regeneration in our towns and villages that, that had such a knockback going 2007, 8, 9, the, the, the very fact that they're there, it's gener generating increased footfall in these places, in their locality. Um, and, and we've changed the look of these buildings, so there is a decrease in that sense of dereliction. Uh, and what I can actually say to you is that there is a bit of a, well, let's call it a mini buzz. Um, and, and anything that you can do in this space, I absolutely believe, um, is uh, creates a, a vibrancy that others see and want to be part of success, even though it's small, and then that uh, grows more. And I'm going to finish off just with this. And it's a quote from um, one of the guys, um, uh, Christian Birch, um, in, in the Orma Hub. And this is exactly what he said just to me a couple of weeks ago. Not only was he delighted uh, to be in the Hub, which was giving him an, uh, uh, an official face and a dress and an opportunity to network, an opportunity for the public and interested people to come in and see um, and maybe buy his work. Um, one of the other things that, that we did right at the start was we said, let's find a way where we can help the sustainability of the hubs and those small businesses. Who, um, you know, a bit like um, Alan earlier, took him a long time to grow his business to uh, be so successful as it is today. And he, I think what he was saying was, he found out a lot as he was going on. Um, so recognizing that most new businesses fail in the first six to nine months of their life, we're, we've put in some mentoring to, uh, that's going to last for, or that lasts for six months from startup for these businesses to try and help them, to give them that leg up um, to um, uh, hopefully they'll not just be a flash in the pan, but a continuing success. So that's all I'm going to present today. Um, thank you.